I'm going to play a little bit with Alien Skin Eye Candy. Uh, the latest version is version 7, but I'm going to be working with version 6 because that's the one I have. I'm particularly interested in something called the swirl function that it has, which I think is uh, an interesting way to model uh, sort of the things that go on with electrical fields. And uh, because of that, you can make some interesting patterns if you do some other stuff to it. If you have electrical fields, um, as I understand them, um, like in the case of a dipole magnet here where you've got a, a positive side and a negative side, if there are little charges in space, they're going to get pushed away from this side, and as they do, the other side's going to start to pull them in again, and they're going to curve around and end up here. If it's here, it's going to get pushed very strongly away um, from this one and attracted very strongly to this one and follow that line. If it's right there, it's just going to make a straight line right from there to there. If it's over here, it's going to fall in like this, and if they're over here, they're going to push out like that. So um, if we look at uh, Photoshop, here I've kind of set up something to mimic the behavior of a dipole magnet where I have a, uh, a grad, and it's black to white, and this one's white to black, and they're crossing with a, with a mask. And so if, and this is, um, so if I take that image, which is just the merge of those ones below it, and I run filter alien skin eye candy swirl you can see that right away there are those uh, electrical field lines so this is how particles would behave if these uh, dark and light spots were uh, positive and negative charges if you take this twist value here and you put it to 100 percent then these are what are called the equipotential lines which are these circles of equal influence between one charge and the other charge so you can see that they're straight here and you know so if if this is a hill and this is a valley the white and the black the positive and the negative then to walk one of these lines you'd be neither rising nor falling in altitude and um, if you put water on the top of one of these hills this is the pattern that the water would uh, flow if it were you know gonna fall into that hole um, so this is the fastest route from one to the other um, so if you look back at the uh, these green lines here these are sort of those equipotential lines that we saw there um, there are also cases where you might have two positive charges um, next to each other like here might be an example of two positive charges next or two negative charges two like charges next to each other and you can see that this stuff is pulled in from this side pulled in from that side and there's this sort of lines that go this way. If they were positive, that everything would get pushed away this way, but it would, the pattern would still be basically the same. So if you look at Photoshop, um, in the case of not this dipole, but in the case of the two positive charges, um, if you have, if you have, uh, here's a, a, a bright spot over here, and there's a bright spot on the other side. If you say filter, uh, swirl again. You can see that there's the behavior of these sort of you know like charges, and if you turn the twist to 100%, you can see the equipotential. They're sort of blobbing, sort of like blobbies. They're sort of blobbing one to the other. Um, so one of the things that's kind of interesting about that is that you can um, make some interesting patterns that way. So if I say edit fill with anything really it doesn't matter and um, then this is set to black and white and I say filter render clouds I get a pattern like that filter blur Gaussian blur just take some of the high frequencies out of it soften it up a bit that could be pretty good maybe like that okay so now if I say uh, filter um, eye candy swirl, what I find interesting is if I say, let's say, um, twist zero. So this is the fastest route between these lights and darks. And if I run it again and say filter alien skin swirl and I set the twist to the uh, ISO lines and when you combine these two things 
let's say by uh, setting maybe um, dark and darker color. So you have these, uh, you can see it's almost like uh, this tree bark, you know, merging into other examples of tree bark. It's kind of an interesting thing. And um, if I take that then and merge it down, I'm holding Alt down and saying Merge Visible. So I just created a, line, a layer which is everything below it merged. Um, if I say Filter, Other, High Pass, you can see that if I go over here, I'm capturing the lights and darks, the low frequency lights and darks. And as I move the l values lower on the high pass filter, I get to a point where I'm only capturing the high frequencies, which are these sort of patterns here. And um, I don't really have anything too spectacular to say about this other than I find this pattern kind of interesting to do things with. Like you could make uh, uh, texture maps uh, that are kind of bark-like or tree-like, kind of mysterious things. You might find it useful for computer graphics. Um, and um, it's something which, you'd, you know, you'd have a hard time making something like this uh, in any other way. I'm just sharpening it now using Topaz in focus, which I really like for sharpening. And so, you know, it's just something that, you know, could be used as the basis for some interesting effects.